All right, here we go. So I have a little project that I wanted to do for the holidays. And I was thinking it would be nice for me to build a version of my FPV-30 wing that uses a KFM-4 airfoil instead of a KFM-2 airfoil. Here's a, here's a KFM-2 version of the FPV-30. You'll notice that it's only got the step on top of the wing. It doesn't have it on the bottom of the wing. So I was thinking, the reason I'm going to do that is ultimately, well, first of all, I want to change how I mount my motor on. So you can see here, the motor mount is between the two pieces of foam. You see this metal bracket? This metal bracket? I've sandwiched between the two pieces of foam, which is great for stability. It's not going anywhere. The problem, of course, is I can't switch motors. So I want to build one that I can switch motors out with the ultimate goal of having this bad boy on it. And this guy is a 755 watt, 3000 kV uh, Turnigy NTM motor. Uh, and I'm hoping for 200 kilometers an hour out of this guy. Once I put the, uh, the uh, build this wing with a KFM4 airfoil, it should fly a little straighter through the air, it, it won't have quite so much uh, lift by default, um, which would be great for speed runs. And if I mount this properly, I should be able to switch it out because I don't think that I want to go out at 200 kilometers an hour every time I fly this wing. So, to get started, I have my plans, which I'll put in uh, the video. And they're pretty basic, and you can find almost exactly the same dimensions uh, if you look at uh, look up Project Flight Design, uh, the Delta Pusher. I've basically taken those dimensions. I've added some fiberglass rods to it. Uh, I use slightly different materials. Um, I mount the motor differently. Uh, but other than that, oh, I also use packing tape. I can't remember if he used packing tape on his. So. Let's get started. Move that camera over there. Actually, you know what would be helpful? I'm going to take this, this camera that's moving around. I don't know which one I'm going to use in the actual video feed at any given time. I've got three cameras mounted. But I'm using a Mobius action cam, which I haven't had a chance to use that yet on a plane. So that's going to be my overhead camera which is just slightly off center, so I'm just gonna move some stuff out of the way here. My Mobius Action Cam, which is this guy right here. And I've got a, an old Sony over here uh, and a Contour HD over there. So hopefully between the three of those cameras, I'll be able to capture what I'm doing as I go through the build. Uh, there's no need to actually see my face, so none of them are pointing in that general direction. So the first thing I take is a sheet of 30 inch by 20 inch Dollar Tree foam board, also known as Ready Board. This is the popular board that's used uh, for Ed's Experimental Airlines builds of his planes. And I will pull over. I built three or four of these kind of guys, and you, you see it's got the foam board here. So I built uh, a couple of his designs. They all fly very well. But right now I'm kind of into wings. So the first thing I do, I don't like the weight, the extra weight that the paper gives you on this foam board. So for these kinds of bills, I also don't like the, the paper when these get wet. Uh, tends to disintegrate a little bit. You lose some of the stability. So what I do is I just pull it off. Let's pretend there's garbage over there. paper off both sides of the foam board. Now you see it curling? If you just pull the paper off the one side of the foam board, you're going to have that nasty curl. You don't want that. And pulling it off the second side, the foam is a lot less stable. So make sure you're supporting it properly as you go. You see how easily this comes off. I've seen people, I don't know if they're using a different brand, 
that I'm using. I've seen them wetting it and soaking it and using heat guns and all kinds of stuff to get this off. And I find it comes off pretty easily. There we go. Now that there's nothing pulling on it, it lies nice and flat in both directions. Something I learned with uh, some earlier wings that I built is that you have to have a light and dark color on these. Otherwise, at a distance, you just can't tell what direction the wings fly. So I'm choosing for my colors today, orange and purple. And I used to, once upon a time, have a, an Experimental Airlines Axon with a nice 60 inch wingspan. And it was purple and orange. And what you can see here is what's left of the purple wing. It met an untimely uh, demise. As I used it for my first FDV flight, and after testing and retesting the equipment a dozen times, when I got out to the field, guess who forgot to connect his antenna? Yeah, not very bright, but our mistakes make us better, right? Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is tape this up. I'm going to tape one side purple, the other side orange. Now I may fast forward in the actual video this taping process because it does take a little while and there's really no advantage to you guys watching it. Just in case I come across something interesting to say while I'm taping, I'll let the video run. Um, Taping, mainly because of stuff like this, is about the longest part of the process, I find. These wings are extremely easy to build. And if you're going for a version of the wing where you only want to do, say, you know, 70 or 80 kilometers an hour, if that's your, your goal, you can probably build one of these, electronics included for about 40 bucks. That's where better lighting would come in handy. I'm going to substitute a pair of glasses for better lighting. Yeah, so 40 bucks for a plane that flies pretty well. Just try and smooth out some of these wrinkles. I don't get too concerned about them. Although, seeing as my goal is to go 200 kilometers an hour with this plane, maybe I should be concerned this time more than usual. So the 200 kilometer an hour version of this plane, or the one that I hope will reach that speed, the motor is about an extra 10 bucks over the what I call my regular version. And the ESC is probably an extra 10 bucks. And if I was smart, which I'm not, I would spend a couple extra bucks on the servos as well. And control horns. So, you add 20 or 25 bucks to that $40 price tag, and you're flying a real rocket ship. Probably too fast for my flying skills. But it'll be fun for the one time that it gets in the air anyway. Another project I want to try when I get time is an 84 inch wingspan wing. We'll call it the FPV-80 or FPV-84 and it will be made out of two or three four by eight sheets of one inch 
pink styrofoam insulation. Plan for that one. Excuse me for a second. Plan for that one is to have two 1100 kb motors on it. All right. <laughs> 